keep boys by my side. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Ladies and gentlemen, SummerSlam 2021 just ended. I want to bring to you what happened. My name is Yellow Boy. This here is Over Here Boy. We're here with Bro Brew by his brand new YouTube channel. So we're going to go right into what happened. So, first match that was up was the pre-show. I mean, if anybody watched the pre-show, I mean, I'm curious. Some people are just getting into the show and whatnot. But the first, show, first match was the pre-show. We had Big E taking on Bear and Corbin in a little to nothing match. Over here, boy, what did you think about that match? Uh, man, to be honest with you, I didn't really care that much for it, and I'm not saying anything bad about the dudes that were in it. It's just like that the way they have done like the whole Baron Corbin character, man, with him being a pretty much a you know hobo. I, I can't get behind that, man. So, uh, and I felt like they kind of just threw it together. So you know, we'll talk a little bit more about about how that may play into things later, or maybe not. They at least Corbin had something. Doing. He has a great move set, as a lot of people have said, and, but his character just has been last at least in the long But the whole back was stipulation was over from Friday Night SmackDown. Baron Corbin had stolen Big E's money to bank the briefcase, and in result, Big E wins, big ending, regains his money in the bank. Not really. <laughs> no, nothing bad. So we move on to the main show. Now, the speculation was that they were WWE was trying to have Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, do the voiceover narration for the intro for SummerSlam. Probably a good thing that they didn't have Iron Mike do that intro. I mean, because we are talking about SummerSlam. So we didn't need Iron Mike to do that intro. But we did an intro with narration. WWE always does well with their production. Excellent production. Um, showed Logan Ball in the crowd. Uh, apparently he got food every time he was on screen. Um, but first match we'll roll into it. First match was AJ and Omo. The Raw the Raw acting champion against RK Bro. Over here, boy. What you got for, for that? Man, to be fair, like, I didn't love it, didn't hate it, but it's just like, you know, it's the same old stuff. It's like AJ is the workhorse of the match, man. He does, he pretty much carries the whole team. So, you know, he's over there running around, jumping around, and the big dude, you know, he got a couple of good moves in. He did one particularly brutal choke slam on, on Riddle and, like, dropped him right on the ring apron, and I thought that was pretty good. But still, that dude is like Frankenstein. He's not taking really any kind of big bumps. I was at least hoping maybe he's going to catch an RKO or something ridiculous like that, but so far, you know, that that's pretty much how I feel about it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how I feel about how, you know, thing, things are going to go with that or how it's going to go forward. You know, we really haven't discussed the the finalization or the ending of the match here, and I'm sure we're going to get to that, but it's just kind of odd to me that that pairing was in the first place, and they've kind of tried to go with it. And I guess, you know, sticking somebody with AJ like that, uh, try to show him the ropes a little bit because, you know, he's probably the best all-in-out worker they got. But that that's all I'm going to have. That's all I'm going to say about that one. I mean, um, without giving any spoilers, we'll, we'll cover that in a second, though. It's the first of what? One, two, three, four, five, six championship matches of the night. First, first six. Um, I do enjoy how RK Bro immediately began to be a cohesive unit at the beginning of the match. Um, seeing as how just recently, this past Monday, Raw, they became a thing again, and York decided to join forces with Riddle to become the RK Bro once again, and now the Raw has And like you said earlier, I think 
could be doing a good job or doing a job or almost to hide his just his uh, inability. He's still rather green in the field, mm-hmm. so having him do all the the, the the bumps and such like that, he has not, to my knowledge, like he's going to take the bumps to do it. It starts tonight. Um, we can get to the to the finish. It's we mentioned this throughout the night as we spoke. It's a lot of clean finishes. Um, there's one that kind of took the air out of the night. We'll get to that. Oh yeah. Um, what did you think about the finish? I mean, the finish was pretty cut and dry, to be honest with you. I, I expected some sort of tomfoolery to go on with it, but you know, it ended up being clean, like we were saying. You know, AJ Styles got pinned one, two, three in the middle of the ring, but he spent more time in that match than Omo did, and it's just like, dude. I mean, it was like when when Braun Strowman had that little kid as <laughs> as his tag team champion, dude. I mean, you you got to have more than that. You're gonna put the straps on somebody, you know, for crying out loud. It's 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 just crazy. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I did. You know, they're. There's more of a viable team with Riddle and, and Orton, you know, in the RK bro. Plus, you know, I mean, AJ Styles isn't going to ride a, a Razor scooter down to the ring, so there is that. True. I just didn't think they would have AJ Styles keep the pin, but I, let me back it up. I wouldn't think that they would have AJ Styles keep the pin because of how they built him prior to WrestleMania. Yeah. But now that I'm saying this out loud, after WrestleMania, he has eaten a few pinfalls. So, all in all, I think it does make, make sense. The crowd seemed to enjoy it. RK Bro, um, and title changed hands. So, in the segment, we can talk about the segment now. Uh, we're talking about it. They had Mario Lopez in the back to do an interview on AC Slater himself. Over here, with AC Slater. Man, dude, I think that honestly, they just try to find some people that were willing to to do something with them, you know, of some sort of celebrity status. Because always on the big shows like that, you know, they try to have some big names, and he's fairly, you know, resonates with people of our age group because we grew up watching Saved by the Bell and stuff. But you know, some kids that are out and about now may not even know who he is. Like, who is this guy? But uh, you know, I thought it was funny that he was carrying on, uh, you know, with. Randy Orton and he said there's three letters and then you know he said RK and then he was like bro and then yeah you know Riddle Riddle said that and of course Riddle did so you guys have to tune in for for Raw man because he said he had a surprise for Orton so we'll see about that Versus Alexa Bliss with Lily in her corner. <laughs> so, but before I touch on that, I do want to say something, man. There were a awful lot of ridiculous little commercials here and there, and I have to touch this, man. But Charlotte Flair was on there hawking a WWE credit card from a bank that, like, if any of y'all sign up for that, I mean, that's on you. But I'm telling you, probably. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Oh, you know, but moving forward, um, yeah, man, the ma- the match was a slapper, dude. I mean, whatever the kids say, banger, slapper, you know, hits, it's fire. I mean, you know, there was absolutely no offense from Eva Marie, man, except for one thing, and she had to use a weapon. So I don't know why she didn't get disqualified, to be honest, but, you know, that's how it goes. But there. Yeah, there's definitely uh, there's definitely been if you've been paying attention some ongoing dissension between her and Dewdrop, which I mean I'm not getting into that. I absolutely hate that name, but I still, but I, I don't understand how there's still a thing. In my notes, I wrote in big wrote bold print. Are they still a thing? Clearly they're done. Like those yeah. are in my notes. Clearly they're done. But I guess we'll have to see on. Monday Night Raw. However, we did say who won in the day. Uh, Alexa Bliss got pinned with, uh, I can't remember what she calls her 
Yeah, man, it don't matter. <laughs> she she came out of nowhere. I mean, she got it on her and it was done, man. Like she tried to go for the whatever the the top rope, um, like corkscrew, and uh, that didn't pan out for her. But then you know she ended up banging that, and it was just one, two, three. And then you know there's a lot of dialogue between her and or Ava Marie and Dewdrop after the fact, which was kind of humorous, uh, but kind of. She uh she managed to get on the mic and directly in Eva Marie's face announced that and the loser of the match, Eva Marie, and walks off. So again, like I said, maybe they're done. But we'll yeah. see on Monday Night Raw to see if they if they are actually done. But moving into the next match, the second championship match of the night which was for the U.S. Championship, which was, uh, of course, it was after the promo segment with Mario Lopez and, and R.K. Bro. It was uh, Damian Priest versus Sheamus, which I joked with you over here, boy, during the show that I wish it was still his uh, lobster head <laughs> intro song. <laughs> Yeah, man, he's he he still got that uh, Celtic Warrior uh, drum march boy going on, and like, man, come on, dude. Yeah. So, what did you think about this match with uh, old Damian Priest? Well, it started the out. Archer. It started out first all, you know, before the archer even rolled out there. You know, it panned out to a shot of the commentators, and then Corey Graves' ass was there with a Motorhead shirt wearing a suit, and I said, dude, I don't know how much more I can do this. Oh, Mr. Pumpkins himself with a Motorhead T-shirt on under that under that boy, but dude, Damian Priest came out. He had kind of like a pretty cool, uh, you know, United States Championship attire on. He had like his little Puerto Rico on one side, and he had his uh, um, the United States flag on the other. They were like on both the one on each thigh. I thought that was cool. I kind of joked and said he was a a what if version of Captain America, but he came out there. And, and, you know, Seamus came out there, and he seemed like he was in a hurry. I mean, he was just like, hey, look at me. I'm running out there with my cool little trench coat, and then the match got started. And he had some offense, but for the most part, it was a, a one-way street. I think it was a slower-paced match. Um, earlier this year, this has been, like, Seamus' year because of the fact that he's been having a whole crap ton of good matches at the beginning of the year before WrestleMania fight. He was one of the uh, stars of the pandemic era with no fans. But now, like, he has this kind of put together with Damian Priest. But the, Damian Priest hasn't had a lot of fires since WrestleMania was bad. Money. So they've kind of been here and there with a few for Damian Priest. But it was hard hit. There's a lot of big shots. There were some big boots by. Uh, there was one in particular from Seamus to Damian Priest to put a boot to the, the right cheek of Damian Priest, which looked brutal. Oh, and there was the the step up punch off the top rope. Oh and yeah. Damian did and completely he barely got a bit of Seamus. Seamus did not catch him, and he hit him straight back, and you could tell it was really hurt. Yeah, he flat backed for sure, man. That was brutal. That was one of those, you know, when we were watching, it was like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. He was packing on his face and whatnot. But he stepped it up and he hit, a, he hit Sheamus with the reckoning for the end. I mean, there were some other spots in that match and whatnot, but he hit him with the crossroads. I mean, the reckoning for the win. <laughs> you, have, you have Damian Priest that just moves with him. Anything else to ask that, The U.S. Championship belt is a piece of garbage, man. That thing looks like, I mean, it looks like one of those wrestling belts that you're in a hurry and you go to the costume shop and have to pick up because, I mean, it's brutal. <laughs> I agree totally. Um, so the next match, again, we move from one championship match to the next championship match. We have champions, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, so, taking on the Mysterio, Ray and Dominic. Um, this is just kind of a continuation of their stuff that's going on SmackDown right now. Um, I don't have much to say about this match except for Pat McAfee 
is a national treasure. Yeah. <laughs> it's protected at all costs. Yep. Yeah, he uh, he definitely is, man. Like I said, you know, I wish they would have explored a little bit more with him and the and the Adam Cole stuff in NXT because I mean, some of those promos he was cutting, dude, was just like a throwback to old school wrestling, like how those pro- heel managers would just cut promos on people. But as far as the match goes, man, I mean, it it was like your standard fare. I mean, Dominic was in there. He's trying to do some stuff, and you know, it was obviously Ray was carrying their team, and he also, having said that, he was the one that caught the brunt of pretty much everything. I mean, that man took so many super kicks, and uh, yeah, and then he got rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, they're just continuing on the story as far as the SmackDown tension between Mysterio uh, with Ray losing trust in the son. Uh, they show they remind that. thing that was so hype was once again Pat McAfee dude that guy was on stage screaming to the top of his lungs dude the image is crazy it's like Nakamura come out in the like most Labor Day white <laughs> color <laughs> co- yep. to come out there and he comes out there with the most absolute ridiculous white attire and he's playing his little championship like that, and Boo's up there playing his guitar, and Pat McAfee's just like, yeah, baby. And it was just awesome. And then, like you said, it was for no reason, and then it cut to, like, a Cricket Mobile commercial, which, you whatever, man. You do you, so, I guess. The next match is the one that will probably spend a little bit more than anything talking about, uh, but it was... On paper, it was Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. But as reported on Friday by Sean Ross Sapp, Sasha Banks wasn't in attendance in uh, Force Magazine. And there's been no reports on, there was no report as of the day before the match that she was not going to be there. We get double served here because they announced that Sasha Banks. And they bring out Carmella. Carmella begins to look like she's going to start the match. But lo and behold, double swerve. We get the man's music. Becky Lynch makes a triumphant return back to WWE after being off of maternity leave and having a child with Seth Rollins. Um, she comes back. And I had mentioned it to Over the Hero Boy right before the match started. I said, please, I hope. I just watched that. Set up a match where they get to the Carmella, and it looks like Becky Lynch is going to have a match with Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I pray it would not be a squash match. Bell rings. Suck punch to the face by Becky Lynch to Bianca Belair. Man slam. One, two, three. Match. Oh, here, boy. Comments. Man, 
I've been watching Bel Air pretty much as for like as long as she's been in NXT, and there's so many times she was going through there, and she almost grabbed that brass ring, and then you know some storyline mess happened, and she didn't get it. Well, okay, cut forward to her coming to the main roster, similar kind of thing, kind of came in with a little fizzle, and then all of a sudden, you know, she took off, won the championship, and then uh, you know I'm sure the match had it been able to take place with Sasha Banks would have ended differently. She probably still would have retained. But uh, it was almost like, hey, we need star power. Becky, if you come in, we'll let you do this and assert that you're dominant and you're back again. I mean, that squash was absurd. Like, uh, And that might be fanboy crybaby stuff from my end, but just watching it play out it has just been you know, absolutely ludicrous, man. I, I, just, I don't know. I don't think you're wrong because checking out on Twitter, uh, there's been a lot of hashtags. Bianca deserves better. And I get it. You bring back Becky Lynch because of what's been going on this entire weekend with that other company. Um, you want that star power and such like that. But don't job out Bianca. I know, right? Don't job out Bianca. It brings me the same vibe as it did with Kofi Kingston. Yeah. King Built him up to be this great champ, and then you job him out on the first episode of SmackDown. And second, you did the same thing with Bianca Belair. Like, again, I use a metaphor with Transformers, the old animated Transformers from the early 1980s, the new ones. And they had a movie. In that movie, Mattel and the directors, Mattel is over. Just thought of Transformers as a toy line. What they did was Optimus Prime, they figured they were going to exit out of one toy line to bring in a new toy line. Not thinking that the fans of the show, children who watched it, had a connection to that toy. It was, it was more than a toy. Optimus Prime was more than a toy for these kids. And yet, now nah, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of him and kill him off. It's what they're what they've done to Bianca Belair is we need these clicks. We need this yep. buzz about it. So we're just gonna not her off to give Becky a chance. I wouldn't have been mad over here boy, I wouldn't have been mad had it been if they had an actual match mm-hmm. and Bianca got it. I mean, I get it, she's had ring rust and stuff like that. We've talked about it before off camera. But even then, if you just had Bianca lose in an actual match, it would be more palatable than just having her be jobbed out in seconds and look crazy at the end of the round after all this build up of these days. So that's about all I'm gonna say on it. You want some uh, <laughs> you got anything else you wanna say on that? Uh, man, kind of going back, touch on what you just said. You know, I'm a fan of like the old school wrestling, like the Crockett promotions and that kind of stuff. When a wrestler would be gone for a long period of time and they came back, you know, due to injury or something of that nature, they usually would come back, you know, still could go, still do things in a match that's like, okay, you know, they haven't lost a step necessarily, but they didn't always, um, you know, immediately win the title or do some big thing like that. And that's what kind of bothers me with that. It's like, man, she was gone for like a year and a half, comes back, and then you mean to tell me she's automatically like that much of a badass. She just rolled right in there, hit a you know pretty stiff little elbow that, that Belair sold really well, and then the man slam, and I was just like, dude, come on, man. Which, you know, if you guys don't know what that move is, it's essentially a rock bottom. And, um, I mean, I, I was just very disappointed because, you know, I, I have more expectation on a returning wrestler. Yeah, I want them to be like, hey, you know, I'm a, a viable competitor, but, you know, you don't necessarily be like, hey, I'm, I'm back, I've been gone this time, and then all of a sudden I'm back at the top of my game again. I mean, works for Brock Lesnar, so I guess maybe that's what they're going for. We'll get to that a little later as well. Um, which, and like I said before, we talked about this last match. I think it took a lot of... Uh, air out of not only us, but somewhat of the fans in mm-hmm. attendance in uh, Allegiance Media Center. So, next match that popped up, oh, excuse me, the next thing that popped up, I 
guess after that was that they had uh, Tamariah, uh Mensa Stock, and Dave Stevenson, uh, Olympic gold medalist in wrestling. Uh, they came out. I think I, I said it off camera. I think they just did that just to say, hey, we got these two Olympic athletes here in WWE. Uh, all your other promotions, you don't have them. So eat it. You know, but I think that's kind of what they did the whole thing. They were just going to eat it. And they cut to a, a promo. And a match that I really don't care about and it had zero stakes was Ender Mahal versus Drew McIntyre. In my notes over here, boy, I have only, the only thing that I have as my notes was this is a match. Well, see, I can't really say the same. I have about four pages of notes on it, mainly saying that they gimmick the crap out of these people. Now, I don't really have that many pages of notes, but, like, I mean, think about it. McIntyre, when he came back from the the Indies, because, you know, everything's the Indies, well, if, it ain't, if it ain't the E, he comes back, and, you know, he's this badass dude with his trench coat, Galloway, he's doing these things, and now they got him wearing a kilt and carrying around a Claymore, which is the absolute most... Like, cliche thing you can do to a Scots person, man. It's horrible. Same thing with Mahal. Um, but, you know, they kind of threw it together. I didn't even really see what was going on. You know, Yellow Boy was telling me that it was because, you know, McIntyre messed up Mahal's motorcycle, which I don't know why. Why does he even have a motorcycle? What's that got to do with anything? Um, you know, he comes out there. And, you know, there's... <sighs> pretty much moves, but then, you know, the match comes down to the end, you, you know, McIntyre hits Future Shock and then Claymore and, you know, one, two, three, another clean pin. Like, there were absolutely no outside interference, which, you know, I, I, I clean pins hit for me, but it's just, I mean, sometimes I want to see some dirty deeds, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm <coughs> anyway. <coughs> Oh, edit edit that out. Dean edit Ambrose. that out. Oh, yeah, Dean. That's that guy. The, the lunatic fringe. Ain't that what they called him? Yeah, the, the fringe. The Look. fringe. But I think it's a, it goes to WWE overcompensating because as of late, a lot of people have criticized them over having too many, like, gimmicky injuries and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. You know, practical fantasy and stuff like that. They've had a lot of them on their weekly shows. So they're overcompensating by having a bunch of clean, you know, clean as a shit victories on tonight's paper. But we go from one match that has zero stakes to the next match, which it has stakes, but it has a gimmick that I've said it, and I think over here, boy, has said it. it it's not made for us, it's not intended for us. And that's a. Uh, let me get this right. This is how they announced it. Almost the superhero, Nikki A.S.H., which stands for Almost the Superhero. <laughs> but it's Nikki A.S.H. versus Charlotte Flair versus Rio Ripley. And I mean, I'll give the devil its due. It was a it was a, a good match. It was entertaining, um, and everybody had a little bit of time to shine. rewind a little bit man like Charlotte Flair hit Rhea Ripley with like one of the nastiest boots I've ever seen in wrestling like I mean it come out of nowhere I thought it was like the mafia kick back in the Masahiro Chono days it was just 
Wow. And I, I mean, I stopped what I was saying mid-watch. I was like, oh, my God, did you see that? It was awesome. But the finish of the match, man, uh, I mean, I feel bad, to, for, to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm just tired of seeing Charlotte as a champ, dude. Like, I, I get what they're probably doing with it. I mean, I'm sure they're going to go down the road again. You know, Rhea's going to get her win back from the big show. But I don't know, man. I mean, to, to me, I still reel in a little bit from the Bel Air you know, Tom Foolery, and I don't know, man. I mean, it wasn't a horrible match by any means. They did a real good job. But, uh, you know, and it was kind of cool. Um, Nikki Ash got put in the figure eight and was trying to crawl to the ropes, and, you know, she was kind of like halfway there and then finally succumbed to, to the submission, which, you know, me and Yellow Boy both kind of thought that Rhea Ripley would interfere there because uh, Nikki Ash had interfered in her... Um, putting the submission hold on Rhea Ripley, you know, panned out, and all of a sudden she comes flying off the top rope and just, like, smashes right on top of Charlotte. But, uh, yeah, all I, all I can say is, you know, they gave her kind of like a little run, and I have a sneaking suspicion that it, that Nikki Ash's, uh, you know, her ignition or spark or whatever is going to be fizzling out soon. So, I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> all in all, new champion, Charlotte Flair. So, in the women's division, you have something old. You have Becky Lynch as your SmackDown Women's Champion, and on the Raw brand, you have Charlotte Flair as your Raw Women's Champion. Um, more things change, more they stay the same. But mm-hmm. that's mad. Speaking of something that, that they got a... Hey, listen. This match got a huge pop. It was Seth Rollins versus Edge, and it was the brood version of Edge Hurts coming from the fires of hell from below the floor. Um, smoking has a, speaking of smoking, that outfit, man, that was smoking, dude. Like, <laughs> that was a, that was a smoking outfit. I mean, literally and figuratively. Um, came yeah. out, and then there was a lull, like a little silence in between, like, through music and pop. And then they get the, you think you know me, and the crowd just exploded. They did. Out of that for, for that intro. So, um, what, you, what, what do you think about this? This Edge versus Seth Rollins. Well, first of all, Seth Seth Rollins, man, he came out there looking like the Matador version of Tito Santana, dude. The outfit he had <laughs> on with his drip. I mean, he looked like a ringmaster. But the more I looked at, it's like it's like a bullfighter. And then I said, dude, first of all, he's got that. And then he's, you know, he's got that blowback Brian Bosworth haircut with the mullet talking about, I come in peace. And I was like, dude, but, but having said all that, dude, that match was a banger. Like, that's what finally kind of drew me back into the show from the few matches before that, you know, and, and Edge, he, he's all the greatest hits, man. If it's a move that you like that he did, he hit it. He even hit the glam slam on Seth Rollins at one time. And, and Seth Rollins was a good dude. There's one, even one particularly nasty spot where Edge was going to take and spear. Uh, he did spear Seth Rollins out of the uh, out of the ring, and, and Yellow Boy actually pointed it out to him. He said, "You see how Seth turned himself to keep Edge from going right down on his head outside?" Which you know, a consummate professional man. So I give uh, Seth Rollins props on that, but not so much on the El Matador suit. That's poop. That's poopies, buddy. Poopies. <laughs> Educator, flip it over to a cross face. Like keeping that whole camp Canadian wrestler, Canadian technical wrestler style in there to, to get the tap from old Seth Rollins. Which I think, was, again, it was a really good match. I mean, consummate professional Seth Rollins. Edge knew the match was coming, waiting for it to happen. Oh yeah, it was great. Um, I'm, I'll tell you one thing though. This is kind of my devil's advocate thing. I get the Edge come back from that neck injury, but they, they eventually, man, they're gonna have to stop every match he's in where they're like, "Oh, they're working his neck, his surgically repaired neck." Like we get it, dude. Uh, but you know, like like Yellow Boy was saying, that that cross face at the end, you know, 
at first I was like, come on, man, this ain't cool because, you know, Seth Rollins kind of snuck his fingers in there and was breaking the hold, and then all of a sudden it all went to hell. And uh, Edge turned it over to something I'd never seen before. Like, he had him in the cross face and a sleeper hold on him at the same time, and that's what was it. And I said, that that's what's up. I, I, I enjoyed that match a lot. Which, after the match, they, as WWE likes to do at live shows for their big four, they announced the attendance, which the attendance was 51,326. Let's hope that that's the actual number. I'm going to zoom past the next part um, because we only have two actual matches left. Uh, the next part was a spot with Miz and Morrison doing a promo for water. The one cool thing that happened, though, and Over Here Boy talked about it, and was we both popped huge for it, was Xavier Woods coming out with his new New Day Rock shirt, which is a la NWO, Wolfpack, red and black, and he came out fully dressed in his Razor Ramon costume including having his complete hair permed and with the one curl on the <laughs> side, the, the, uh, on the front, I mean, and the toothpick in the ear and toothpick in the mouth. They did a thing, squirted it water. Some people laughed, a little people, other people looked like they were annoyed by it. It was a thing that happened. We don't deserve to say That's it. That's what I just said. We don't deserve to say the wood. However, so let's talk about one of the cold main events, which was Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. I went to hear that for about five, six minutes. But we got a little bit more. We, we got a little bit more, but uh, it looked like it was a mostly Bobby Lay. Bobby looked like he controlled a lot of that match. Um, about the difference. Billy Boy, Goldberg there. What did you see? Over the boy? Man, like, Goldberg showed me a whole realm of things I'd never seen before, dude. Like, when he came out there and put Lashley in the Boston Crab, it was absolutely ridiculous. Did that happen? No, that never happened. No, dude, seriously, I, I'm, I'm the same thing. <laughs> I'm the same with Yellow Boy, dude. Seriously, I thought it was going to be your typical Goldberg squash. He was going to come in. You know, there might have been a little offense from Lashley, Spear, Jackhammer, one, two, three, but that was not the case at all because Lashley whooped that ass. Like, he beat Goldberg like I ain't never seen, and that's exactly what I wanted to have happen. He did it upright. And then the the little piece, I'm, I'm going to let Yellow Boy have that, but the little piece towards the end, boy, he he put a he put that hurt lock on, on somebody, and he had him stretched out, and I said, that, that looked like it hurt. So, I mean... Let's back up a little bit. That was brutal. That, that old Billy Boy almost missed. Mm-hmm. It was a spot where MVP was on the outside, and he supposed to strike Goldberg in the leg with his cane. And Goldberg took a step forward, and then, like, it hit him, like, oh, I'm supposed to sell this, because he was about no sold this. He sure but did. It all rolled into the finish of the match, had of no sold it, it wouldn't have been a thing. So he he uh, hit him in the leg and he sold the, the leg to fly. And then it led to Bobby Lashley focusing again on his leg and then not fly. But after winning the match, Bobby Lashley came in with pain. Uh, Bobby still continued to work his leg. A, a chair magically slid in. <laughs> it did. Uh, it did. He found it hilarious. It was like, the bell rang, the announcement was made, and a chair just slid in the ring like a ghost chair. <laughs> Indeed, it came in like this. <laughs> what? Where? Where did that chair come from, dude? It was. It did. It, it Bobby come... wailed on on Bill Boy. He kept continued to go on, put a beat down, hurt on him until Gage. For all of you who don't know, which is Bill Goldberg's son, Gage jumps on Bobby. Bobby, not knowing who it is, flips him over, puts the old boy in the 17 year old boy, let's put that out there. Yeah. 17 year old boy in a hurt lot until MVP notices who it is. They got the heck out of Dodge and got on the mic. And MVP, which I thought was a stupid move, like, just, just leave the ring. But he got on the mic. We didn't know that was Goldberg's son. Okay, 
Now Goldberg rolls over and sees, oh, my son got hurt. So yeah. Now I'm, I'm angry. Brrr, I'm angry. So, <laughs> another, another match somewhere down the line, which I thought I heard that Goldberg fulfilled his two matches that were left on his contract. So we'll Dude. see how. I mean, Pat McAfee again came in at the end and he said, Bill Goldberg's sophomore in high school son just got absolutely annihilated or some such dialogue and I died because that kid did, man. I mean, he had the hurt lock on him so bad that, and he at one time almost had him in a camel clutch at the same time. Oh, it was brutal. It was awesome, though. Freaking awesome. And it leads us to the main event. Roman Reigns versus the one and only John Cena. And John Cena's missing hair. I mean, what? No. Blowback. That's a blowback cut. <laughs> he's, got the, he's got the sting going yeah, He on. does. He got he got the stinger. That Steve Borden. <laughs> yes. He kept, I don't know if anybody else noticed this. John Cena, after most of his moves, he would just slick back his hair. Yeah. Everything. Every five seconds, man. It it now let me tell you, as far as the main event goes, it received the buzz that it needed from the crowd. The crowd relatively hot the whole show. Mm-hmm. And, and Reigns did what Roman Reigns does talk smack to John Cena and to the fans throughout the entirety of the match. Like a certain sense of dominance. Mm-hmm. no notes for this match. All I kept doing, I couldn't see nothing on my paper for that glare off of John Cena's back of his head, man. Dude, dude looked like Chris Elliott off a scary movie, that butler dude. You know what I'm talking about? That gnawed up hand and stuff. But no. Um, man, for some reason, that whole clean finish thing was a hitter this whole evening, man. Like, you think the Usos did come in, but they didn't have to. Um, you know, there was one particular part I thought was hilarious. You know, Reigns was whooping on, on Cena, and then he gets to the camera, and he's basically telling Hollywood, he's like, man, he's like, you better hope that he looks this way when I'm done with him because I'm fixing to whoop his ass, and then <laughs> proceeded <laughs> proceeded to beat on John Cena. But, you know, I, I kind of figured that's the way it was going to go. But, um, you know, John Cena got some good, good offense in, man. Like, he really did. Like, he had all of his moves that you would think, but... He tried to go for the, the five knuckle at one time and you know, he got put in a guillotine choke for his trouble, so you know, he wiggled it. The Avalanche AA in the second row he did have that. Yeah, and you know, he even put the the STF on him at one time, so I mean, you know, it was all his greatest hits too, which is you know what's what the crowd wants to see. He he did come out with a pretty super uh radical uh, attire. He had kind of like a Super Mario Brothers 3 thing going on his t-shirt. I thought that's kind of cool, but at the same time, man, I'm just, I don't need to see John Cena anymore. I've been watching him for 20 years. So, ah. Speaking of super, it took not one, but two Superman punches and multiple spears. Well, a spear right after the two Superman punches. He put down old John Cena for the one Two, three, and a retention for the head of the table to be acknowledged coming rain. But wait, there was one more person that acknowledged Roman Reigns at the end of the show. After all the chaos, I'll let you tell it. Who acknowledged? What are you talking about? I didn't watch that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. No, I did. I miss messing with you. <laughs> you you talking about the guy that we were talking about earlier? 
Yeah, you know, the, the man who brings the pain. Yeah. Mark Henry. Hey, yeah. b- before I get in before I get into all that though, <laughs> man, Paul Heyman had the Alfred Hitchcock rolling around there and I swear he had a necklace on that looked like BLT sandwiches. Had like you know, he's just pulling that boy off and home, home, and then going on. I mean, those lays they wear out there is absurd, dude. He looked like he had some veggie chips, like some radish and beet chips around his neck. It was the worst. And he had a lay made out of Lay's potato chips. That's exactly what he had. He had a Lay's made out of Lay's potato chips, and they're not a sponsor, so don't be thinking about that. Not a sponsor. But, but anyway. He brought up Paul Heyman because he was about to go into – who did we actually see at the end of the show? The Viking warrior himself, ponytailed Brock Lesnar. Not the little Brock Lesnar with the high and tight and clean baby face. No, this is the one that's been out hanging in Canada and killing stuff. So he came back, and he just, oh, he didn't have to do nothing. He didn't say nothing what he did, but I couldn't hear him. And then he just grinned, and Paul Heyman was flipping out. He's like, oh, no, oh, no. So, yeah. Uh, you know, Brock came out there. He looked like he's pretty excited. I don't know how a baby face Lesnar's going to be, or we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of interested in where they're going to go with that. Somebody's going to come out of it, you know, like Roses, and somebody else is not going to be, so we'll see. And that, my friend, was the show. Um, overall, it, it did what it needed to do. There was a little bit of something that happened yesterday that kind of almost put a, a kibosh on any news that's coming from SummerSlam, which was CM Punk to AEW confirmed. That's what I mean. That right there Ooh. is something that, that, you know, so I think all this star power that's going on with Becky Lynch and Brock Lesnar, I think that was really contend with what AEW had put out yesterday in Um Any final thoughts, though, about the SummerSlam show? Man, uh, I, I, if you had to give it a star rating, I'd probably go middle of the road and give it three out of five. I mean, it was entertaining for the bits that were. I mean, super, and I get it's on Peacock, Super, uh, just too many commercials, man. That uh, that are just stroking your own ego, and and it was only like th- three or four different, um, you know, advertisers. Most of being Peacock, you know, there's a couple of mobile phone ones out there, and uh, and that. So I don't know. Well, I agree with you. It, it wasn't uh, the best show that I've seen ever. It didn't carry the emotion. Show that was shown yesterday, but it did again what it had to do, what it was. Uh, I'm going to have the same kind of energy as WrestleMania this week, but WrestleMania wasn't as WrestleMania as it was supposed to be. So I'm like you, middle of the road for that uh, uh, two and a half, maybe a three star. Tell us what you think about it. Tell us down there in those comments, and if you like what we do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, let us know. Uh, even if you like even more, just go ahead and subscribe. Yeah. Okay. We're going to sit here talking about wrestling. We'll talk about beer. Talk about suggestions of wrestling and beer together. Mm hmm. Oh. But over here, boy, tell the people where they can find you at. They can find me on. Uh the Instagrams or at the Twitter at over here boy it's all one word and uh, that's where I be and you know I apologize if you decide you're going to watch that stuff because I get on there and mostly beer related and I'm an absolute crazy person so you know I had to turn it turn it you know tune it down a little bit uh, I hope you enjoyed man so you know tell them where you can be found at my man right now I can be found at bros through the letter N boxes find that on Twitch, find that here on YouTube. Uh, right now I'm making up a new channel or a new social media page for everything else. Again, a very brand new channel. If you're watching us right now, thank you for watching us. Tell your friends about us. It's only going to get better from here. But again, I'm Yellow Boy. Right there. That's over here, boy. This is 
Well, yeah. Better not bring your kids. <laughs>